What's going on guys? Welcome to the program. Welcome to Currency World. Most of you have probably heard of Julius Caesar, but what you may not know is that Julius Caesar is a historical enigma of sorts. On the one hand, he is a heroic figure that raised the prestige of the Roman Republic through his military conquests, like those of Gaul and Egypt. But also, on the other hand, he is an anti-hero in many ways, as his untethered political aspirations that led to his infamous assassination at the hands of Roman senators ultimately brought about the end of the Roman Republic and ushered in the beginning of the Roman Empire. Today, we will be taking a closer look at some very special ancient Roman coins that tell the story of this very special enigmatic historical figure. Since I am not an expert on the subject of ancient coins, our friend Dr. Elia Zlobin is back again with the presentation on the subject. Before we get into it, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and tell your friends about Currency World. Without further ado, let's get into it. I've put together a collection of uh, ancient Roman Julius Caesar coins and coins related to him and I'd like to tell you his story as told by his coins. Well, Julius Caesar is a very famous uh, character in, in history. For example, we have this coin over here. This was struck for only about a month when he was still alive, February to March. Remember the whole eyes of March, March 15, 44 BC? Um, there was a plot to assassinate him uh, by Brutus and a whole bunch of other conspirators in the Senate who uh, snuck in with um, knives, with these uh, little short knives, and um, wound up stabbing him um, to death. On, on the back, you see that's Venus actually uh, featured holding victory. Venus was the patient deity of Julius Caesar because his family actually traces descent to Venus herself. That was the whole thing. But the whole, the, another interesting thing is that, for example, we have here a portrait coin of Mark Antony. Mark Antony was actually held up outside of the Senate House uh, by somebody. And, uh, you know, maybe if he was there, the assassination wouldn't have happened. But Julius Caesar went inside anyway, and he wound up uh, getting assassinated. And maybe if this guy was still there, one of his generals, he would have actually been able to, uh, you know, do a major, uh, something, something different might have happened historically. So, Julius Caesar had several different coins. You, had, you have the coin with the elephant. The elephant stomping out a serpent. And it says Caesar underneath. That's very interesting. And the priestly implements of the Roman office of uh, the, the, the highest priest office of Pontifex Maximus. Here's another coin from where it's not a portrait coin. Portrait coins of an emperor were a no no. All right, because they, they don't believe a live person should be put on a coin. They did put their ancestors on their coins, but not of somebody that's alive. So that's where Julius Caesar actually committed a big no-no. What's interesting is that Julius Caesar portrait coins were actually struck even after his death, just like Alexander the Great. See this coin from 40, circa 42 BC, it's several years after he passed on. Next, Julius Caesar actually looked up to Alexander the Great. This is a silver a Greek coin from Pelament from circa 90 to 75 BC. I could have showed you a coin from a little bit earlier from 336 to 323 BC, but the, what this coin actually illustrates is that Alexander the Great was still popular in the minds of the people and a lot of people looked up to him. Julius Caesar wound up actually visiting the tomb of Alexander the Great at Alexandria in Egypt. and. Um, he actually felt that he did not accomplish uh, even one-tenth as much as Alexander the Great, and he was much older than him already when he died. You know, because Alexander the Great died at around uh, maybe 33 or 36 years of age, and he was already older than that. 
So next coin, let's let's see this this coin. That's not a portrait coin, but you see Julius Caesar coins in all are very much valued. The portrait coin is the probably the most interesting to have. Next, let me show you a coin of Sulla. Sulla, Julius Caesar actually knew Sulla. There was um, a dictator that came to power. This is Sulla in a chariot. See, it says M. Sulla. And um, what happened was he was a dictator before Julius Caesar came to power. And he set the whole idea of using your army to scare the Senate into giving you power. So this coin we have is of from circa 82 BC. Next, let's move on. So what happened was Julius Caesar got assassinated March 15th, 44 BC. And, um, you know, there was a very big uproar. You know, there was uh, a lot of people that were up for the Republican cause. Of, of one of them, you know, was Brutus Cassius. They ran away. I didn't put a coin here of Brutus, but there's one specific coin where, which commemorated his um, Eyes of March, the assassination, and that's super rare and worth maybe, in good conditions, hundreds of thousands of dollars. But... Bruce and Cassius, they escape Rome after the assassination. And what happened is actually Mark Antony and um, Augustus, who was known as Octavian Caesar, who assumed the name of Caesar on his coins, and um, they wound up defeating the assassins of Julius Caesar. And then this coin was minted. This coin is from Philippi. And it features uh, the Victory, which is the goddess of, uh, you know, Victory. She's holding the wreath and the palm. And so you see it says, Vic Av. So it's the Victory of Augustus. And over, the, over here you have the military standards. This coin commemorates the, you know, the wrong being righted by, you know, these, um, by having a victory over the assassins of Julius Caesar. So after Julius Caesar passed on, you had Augustus, because he was the um, great grandnephew, uh, basically an adopted son of Julius Caesar, and he actually assumed the name of Caesar in order to, to use it for political gain. This coin is actually quite interesting because when Julius Caesar passed on, it's been noted historically that there was a great comet that flew over over Rome which everybody saw and this actually coin commemorates that comet flying over um, after he passed on. An interesting thing that a comet actually uh, flew over when Mark Twain also passed on. So this is a very popular type also. So even after the death of Julius Caesar he was still very popular. Noted by this coin over here from circa 38 BC where, where it features on one side the portrait of Julius Caesar, and on the other side you had the portrait of Augustus. But notice both of them are named Caesar in this coin. Augustus wanted to capitalize on that. Later on, you had a whole lot of story. Basically, Augustus, Mr. Mark Antony, they... Uh, formed a pact with another person named Lepidus. And um, eventually this pact fell apart because Mark Antony, he fell in love with uh, Cleopatra and um, he um, insulted Octavian because he uh, abandoned his sister whom Mark Antony married in order to curry political favor with Augustus. And um, they didn't like the idea that possibly Mark Antony would uh, marry somebody that's outside of Roman um, aristocracy. And um, there was a there's a whole you know big story with uh, Mark Antony and Cleopatra, and also Julius Caesar and Cleopatra. Cleopatra gave Julius Caesar actually a son named Caesarian. And um, when Mark Antony got defeated. The, the son of Julius Caesar uh, wound up actually getting assassinated because he would have been 
in line for the succession of uh, Augustus, who was just an adopted son, and the, and the Caesarian would have been his real son. So what happened was that things fell apart, and in 31 to 30 BC, you had um, a great battle going on. This is a coin of um, Mark Antony from circa 32 to 31 BC, and it what it features the galley which was to symbolize the might of his um, naval power because he built up a huge fleet with you know the help of the funds of Cleopatra which had tons of cash and um, that's what he did and on the back you had the legionary standards also to symbolize his legions you would have the legion and the number next to it so this one would be legion 4 see I I I I pretty much Legion 4. There was uh, over 20 legions, and this is a series to collect all on its own. So, what happened was, there was a big preparation for a naval battle. He felt that he had naval superiority, but instead of, uh, because he had a preponderance, he had a bigger, a lot more troops. Mark Antony had a lot more troops than Octavian did, than Augustus. And, um, but he chose to do the battle on sea, which was advised against. And then he saw Cleopatra fleeing from there because she thought uh, Mark Antony, you know, got, you know, slain in battle. And um, he abandoned his troops and his troops wound up actually getting defeated by the best friend of Augustus named Agrippa, Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa. He wound up actually defeating him um, in a great na naval battle. So... Basically, after Mark Antony got defeated, you had um, one man left alone to assume all power, and um, which was Augustus, the adopted son of Julius Caesar. So the whole story of the this time period could actually be told and remembered and um, valued through these great historical coins. So there you have it, guys. What did you guys think? I know that I certainly always learn a lot from listening to Dr. Zlobin. What other coins related to important historical figures would you guys like to see featured on the channel? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out. All right. I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.